and welcome everybody, and thanks for joining this session. Today, I want to introduce a next generation vector tiles format called Map Libre Tiles, which I have worked on during nearly the last two years. So, the Map Libre Tiles format is based on the Mapbox vector tiles format, but it's redesigned from the bottom to improve on different key issues or key topics, such as a significantly smaller tile size, so better compression ratio, then faster decoding and processing performance, and also it adds new missing features, like a more complex type system, and also support for M values or 3D coordinates, to name just a few. Um, the format got also some momentum in the last couple of weeks, because on the one hand, it was integrated into the MapLibre organization, and on the other hand, we could convince Microsoft based on the uh, results of the research prototype to thankfully donate and financially support the integration into, or POC integration into the MapLibre GLJS map rendering library. Yeah. Come in. So, um, but first things first, let me introduce myself. My name is Markus Dremmel, and I work as a software engineer and architect at a company called Rode and Schwarz in Germany. I also teach vector data processing at the Deckendorf Institute of Technology. And one of my main work focuses is on researching on the next generation of map rendering stacks. So basically, I look at different components of the map rendering stack and try to optimize and innovate on them. Beginning from storing the tiles or the vector data in the cloud up to rendering the vector data on the GPU on the client. So, if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter, GitHub, or if you want to further discuss about this format, just drop me a mail. Okay, so let me start by giving you an overview over the current geospatial vector formats landscape. So this is by far not a an, an complete overview, but it should give you a first impression how the vector formats are related and how they can be combined. So, basically, one slide back, we can, you can divide the geospatial vector formats into two categories based on their use case. The one format are the graphics formats, how I call them, they are optimized for visualization or rendering of 2D and 3D maps. And then you have a, set, a second type of format, okay, which is optimized more for the analysis or analytics use case. So these are classic analytics formats. These formats are really optimized and centered about the support for efficient spatial queries. For example, like a range query, k nearest neighbor query, k and n query, or spatial, doing spatial joins, for example. Um, some current formats which are quite popular at the moment and are widely used are on the one hand GeoParkey and on the other hand GeoArrow. So GeoParkey is optimized for the efficient storage of large amounts of data, so big data, big geospatial data. And then GeoParkey or portions of GeoParkey can be transferred from a cloud or server, cloud storage or server to the client, and there it can be transcoded or decoded into GeoArrow, so which is basically an in-memory format, and on this, based on this format, efficient analytics can be performed. You will also find this separation of a storage format and in-memory format in MapLibre tiles, because I think this is the way format, and it's also used big data analytics and databases and so on. But this kind of formats are really optimized on complex spatial queries and they're not optimized for doing base map rendering. So they're optimized for efficient visualization of um, overlays. So just, which I mean, it's just, but there is no hard definition of a base map or overlay, but by an overlay I mean it's limited to some extent and you don't have thousands, thousands or hundreds of layers. You just have one or two or so on. Because, 
and there comes the second category into the, into the game. If you want to really visualize base maps, you need different concepts. Basically, you need the concept of an overview, so that you have different zoom levels, and you need the concept of tiles. So this is still the way forward, in my opinion. If you want to visualize large base maps, then you, then you have to use a tile-based approach. And you basically can divide, further divide this category of tiles into three different yeah, subcategories. On the one hand, so here on the right, you have the 2D and 2D.5 map visualization. So that's basically what Mapbox vector tiles and map libre tiles are optimized for. Then if you want to go a step further and you want to display terror, there are also formats like quantized mesh from cesium and terror RGB, which is basically not a vector format, it's a PNG format, but it contains the height values. With this format, you can display a terror. And in addition to that, if you want to really display high or a very large amounts of 3D data, so massive 3D models like detailed 3D buildings or bridges, so detailed man-made man -made objects, you have to go with 3D tiles or E3S, which is from ESI. But 3D tiles is really the, um, yeah, the industry standard, I would call it. But I often get the question, how is 3D tiles related to, to map libre tiles? Is there still a need for uh, map box vector, uh, for map libre tiles or not? Yeah, so I think on the one hand, they are having totally different use cases. 3D tiles is optimized for uh, storing uh, a scene graph. So it's basically optimized for rendering a scene. So really detailed 3D models. And map libre tiles is optimized on mapbox vector tiles for rendering a map. And, but they can be combined in a, in a nice way. For example, um, mapbox show this in the current release of their mapbox GLJS library. So you use um, terror RGB for rendering the terror. Then on top of that, if there is a need, you can display 3D tiles for really detailed 3D buildings. And then on top of that, you can dis use map libre tiles to display point of interest, house numbers, so addresses, uh, yeah, different line strings, so tracks, and so on. So at the end of the day, you could also, if there is a need for more detailed 3D content, you can combine them. And so with map libre tiles alone, or map box vector tiles, you, you get this kind of visualization, you get a 2D map, and if you want, you can do simple extrusions, which I call 2.5D maps. So we have, like you see it here on the, on the right, you have a, a, a limited 3D visualization, but it gives a first impression of um, yeah, the environment. Okay, so what is now map libre tiles? So, like I said at the beginning, the, map, the MLT format is mainly inspired by the Mapbox vector tile specification, but has completely been redesigned from the bottom up to address key challenges. On the one hand, or especially the continuously growing amounts of data, because the geospatial sensors are getting better and better, so you're producing more geospatial data, and also the software algorithms getting better and better based on, on artificial intelligence. Maybe you know these convolution neural networks which are used to detect, for example, buildings. Think of Google buildings, of Microsoft buildings, which detected over one billion buildings based on artificial intelligence. So the data set is continuously growing, and this is also one, one important aspect why there is a need for a more, opti more optimized vector tiles format. So it has basically, um, uh, regarding uh, the modeling, the same, um, yeah, the same approach. So you have a collection of feature, which is in Mapbox vector tile called a layer. We call it currently a feature table. So it's a collection of, of features, and a feature can have an ID, a geometry, and a property, which further, descri further describes the, the feature. So 
And as with M MVT, the geometries are based on the simple feature access model and also are defined in a grid integer coordinate system. So this is some in contrast to analytics formats where you have mainly double values to have high precision coordinates. In if you optimize for rendering, you want to prune as much as possible, throw away most of the properties and also limit the resolution of the, of the geometries so that it can be fast rendered. Because based on the different zoom levels, you don't, in most cases, you don't need the highest resolution. And one thing which I mentioned at the beginning, to combine a good compression ratio with um, a fast decoding and processing performance, the MapLibre tiles format is also divided into uh, in-memory and in a storage format. Okay, so now what are key features, key improvements of MapLibre tiles compared to Mapbox vector tiles? So the first three points I already mentioned, I will go into more detail later. So better compression ratio, faster de decoding, and faster processing performance. So to sum it up, improve performance and uh, reduce the size of the tiles. The next three topics are, or four topics are related to missing features, which are getting more and more important because of the new source formats or the new geospatial source formats, for example, from overture maps. So the, the first feature is called M values or, um, um, or linear referencing, which going mostly in the same direction. So the point with Mapbox vector tiles is you basically have a one-to-one -one mapping of a feature, like here, um, to a property, or from a geometry to a, to a property. For example, if you have a, a street, you have to have, you have to have one to one mapping feature to uh, the surface type. So feature one has concrete, feature two gravel, feature three asphalt. So and that's very inefficient. That's not nice. Can be not nice modeled, and it's also in inefficient in terms of storage, because you have to create a lot of overhead, a lot of features. And with MLT, you, know, you now have um, the possibility to um, model this in a more effect effective way, like you see it here. You have just one feature, which has one geometry, for example, one, one road with 10,000 of geometries or of vertices, so one line string with 10,000 of vertices, and you just store, depending on the location, you just store the property. So it significantly reduces the number of, of geometries. Uh, yeah. Then it also adds support for 3D coordinates. So Mapbox Vector Tiles is basically um, optimized, or is just 2D, 2D coordinates. And it also adds support for more complex type system. So including nested properties, lists, and maps. So Mapbox Vector Tiles is basically just a, a flat format. You can just store primitive types. This is important because um, if you go out outside and look at, yeah, at the yeah, at the technologies there, look at the databases, the data formats, no, no SQL databases, JSONs, Parquet, and so on. They all have nested, sorry, nested um, capabilities to store complex types. And this is also important if you look at the right, because Overture Maps, I think, which is getting one of the most important data sources in the future, um, has the support for complex nested properties. Okay, so how does this format now look like? So I will start with the storage format. Like I said, it's divided to be more efficient in a storage and in, into an in-memory format. So the main difference to Mapbox vector tiles is that now it is used a column-oriented layout compared to this record-oriented or row-oriented layout used by Mapbox vector tiles. Like you can see it here on the, on the bottom. For example, you have ID column, it's called ID field, you have a geometric column, and you have multiple property columns. So it's stored in a column-oriented way, and this has the advantage. It offers a better compression ratio, and also, in most parts, it can be faster um, processed, because you can, it has better, better cache locality, so less cache, cache misses, and also um, allows the usage of single instruction, multiple data feature. So 
which is basically called SIMD or vectorization. I think this is a very important feature which is currently missing in the map, can't, which can't be used currently in JavaScript, but it, which can't be used in WebAssembly. Because with SIMD now I can, for example, um, process four integers at a time. So you get significantly in far, uh, improved processing performance, which also is shown in the current prototypes I have implemented. So and then on top of these columns, to reach this good compression ratio, um, uh, lightweight recursive SIMD friendly encodings are used. And then also, like you can see it here, a column is subdivided into, into streams to further um, give information about the data. So I will skip over a little bit faster because the time is running out a little bit. So then we have the in-memory format, which is, okay, five minutes, so I will go a little bit faster. So the in-memory format, in format is basically inspired, like I said, from the in-memory formats, like Apache Error, DuckDB execution format, or Velox, um, the meta, uh, from Meta, so basically Facebook, and it's really optimized for doing fast processing um, and also support fast rendering on the client. This is done based on vectors, and you can also use compressed vectors, which make it more efficient for the decoding and for the processing. So then I just want to, we'll go faster over some topics which are very important about map rendering bottlenecks, um, because how a new vector tiles format can support map render to show a significantly faster rendering performance. So in this example, I use MapLibreGLJS, and I, pro I profile the MapLibreGLJS worker. So the first innovation, or, or the first thing we are adding to vector tiles is so-called a pre-tessellation. Because think about um, the geometries which are transferred to the GPU. They, they basically have to be tessellated or triangulated, which means they have to be, it has to be triangles. So that the polygon has to be split up in triangles. That's what the graphic card effectively can, effectively can process. And what we are doing now is we store the pre-tessellated um, geometries in the tile. So there's, the there advantages, there's basically less overhead on the client side or nearly no overhead on the client side in to bring it into triangles for polygons which make it much more efficient. So the next thing with lines, lines are harder. You can't use that approach because just to keep it short, lines also has to be uh, tessellated. You also need triangles because you can't do, you can't draw um, high definition lines with WebGL or with, with graphic card, they're not good at it. So you have to also tessellate it. But the point is, this is a harder problem because of the styles, because, because based on the styles you can change uh, the layout or the structure of the geometry. But WebGPU compute shader are coming and I think these are, this is really promising, this is, will be a game changer. I already did some prototypes going into this direction because now you can do the tessellation on, in the future you, you will do the tessellation on the compute shader and this solves some of these bottlenecks. Okay, so I skip over a little bit faster. So there are also some additional advantages regarding tile processing performance. Um, for example, you don't materialize strings, which is a, a extremely hard bottleneck in MapLibreGLJS. You just use the UTF-8 buffer and the compressed vectors. And you also, based on the column-oriented layout, compared to the row-oriented layout, which is used by Mapbox vector tiles, or in these libraries which are processing Mapbox vector, vector tiles, you are creating much less objects. And yeah, this creates less pressure on the garbage collector. Okay, just a few words on the, on the, on the current status to close this presentation. So what's the status? We currently have a first initial draft of the spec. You can look at it at GitHub and can discuss, discuss with, that, uh, with us how to, to further 
proceed with it. Then, thanks to um, Dane Springmeier and Eric uh, Brelsford, we are now having a POC integration into, um, yeah, into MapLibre GLJS, which is not production ready, but I think it was a big step forward. Both did an amazing engineering job and showed this is possible and this is the way forward, but there is some way to go to efficiently do it in the client. So, last words, so um, on the performance, so first on the compression ratio, we get up to 6x reduction on large map tiles, scheme-based tiles, and up to 2x on the really optimized Bing Maps tiles. So these Bing Maps tiles are really, from Microsoft, are really optimized. We, got, we get up to 2x without using heavy byte compressions. I will, this is a separate topic or a separate talk about, yeah. And the last thing is decoding performance. We have heavily discussions about it. You can look at the GitHub issues, how to benchmark it. So if we use the proposed in-memory format and decoding it from the storage into the proposed in-memory format, the Java decoder shows an about 4x speed up of map libre tiles compared to uh, mapbox vector tiles. If you but then again benchmark against the from MapLibre used internal in-memory representation, then we are currently slower because we have to to convert from the column or we have to do an additional step from the column oriented format into the in-memory format. So yeah, which is quite expensive. So hopefully in the future we can refactor it to use a column oriented approach, then we have for sure the the most gain out of it, but currently we have to find an intelligent way of doing this transformation and getting equal performance. And finally, I want to thank yeah, three, three or two companies and one organization. So thanks to Microsoft for sponsoring the POC integration. Thanks to Stamen, which is the contractor of Microsoft for um, yeah, doing basically the POC integration into MapLibre and thanks to MapLibre for, yeah, the full support. And also thanks to five special persons. First of all, Yuri, who is yeah, one man of MapLibre. This guy <laughs> standing here, yeah, who is the man with the network, knows the companies, doing all the stuff behind and bringing together the people. And also to Dane Springmeier, Springmeier and Eric Brelsford for doing the POC integration and to Ante Viducic and Felix Fischer for working or doing important um, contributions to the research prototype. So thanks for listening, and I'm open for questions. So we have time for two questions, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Could you enable this microphone, please? Yeah. So what tools are there to encode MLT tiles? And specifically, is there a GDAL driver? No, at the moment, <laughs> some way to go. We have no GDAL driver. It's at the beginning. Yeah, we are. I, I would call it we are months away. We have to go the, the way further, but at the moment it's missing. We are not production ready. Yeah. Uh, hi. Can you uh, share a little bit more about the uh, columnar storage? And in particular, I was wondering what this SM and FM meant. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So w the main idea is in, in Mapbox vector tiles, you store feature by feature in a row-oriented, record-oriented way. You first, a feature is modeled by ID, so you have the ID of the first feature, then you have the geometry of the first feature, and then the properties of, of the first feature, and then with the <laughs> second feature. This is in contrast to this column-oriented lay layout, where you have all IDs of the features, so feature one to feature 10,000, for example, then all geometries, the next in memory and then property one is in memory and then property two one or is in storage in, in the layout is next. So, and then it's important to subdivide these columns into so-called streams. This is some naming from, from the org format because you need some additional information to, to store it in a sparse way. For example, if you have a nullable field, like say the ID column is nullable and not all IDs are present, then you just want to store the IDs you don't want to store uh, the, the null values. 
And because of this, you have an additional present stream, which is basically a bit, a bit vector, which is telling you, okay, the, the first ID is present or not. So in the data stream, you just store the actual IDs, and in the present streams, you tell, is it null or not? Or for example, you have then, if you have variable sized um, values, like for example, strings, then all strings are stored in, a, in the data together. So from feature one, uh, from property one, all, all strings are stored in a new TF8 buffer. But then you have to know the length. Because of this, it can be efficiently uh, compressed, but then you have to know the length of each property of the feature. And because of this, for example, you have then additional length streams. So these are the basic concept streams and columns and so on. 